Hello dear friends. Today we are going to learn about strain theory. The strain corresponds to the relative deformation at the fracture site, being defined by the following formula, strain is equal to the final gap minus the initial gap, divided by the initial gap of the fracture. Therefore, each fracture needs an adequate strain for the best healing to occur, whether directly or indirectly. Let's see a practical example. Simple line fractures have a shorter distance between bone segments, corresponding to a small gap. Therefore, even with a small displacement between them there is a high deformation compared to the initial gap, resulting in a high strain. Comminuted fractures, on the other hand, have a greater distance between bone segments, resulting in a larger gap. Therefore, a small displacement doesn't cause a high deformation compared to the initial gap, resulting in a low strain. Now, notice what happens when the same tension force is applied to both types of fractures. Still didn't understand. Let's try another way. Let's look at a purely didactic example. We have two types of fractures here, one with a simple line and other comminuted. The simple line fracture has a gap of 10 micrometers, while the comminuted fracture has a gap of 80 micrometers. Let's assume that the same tension force is applied to both fractured bones, resulting in a displacement of 10 micrometers in each one. In simple line fractures, this displacement will result in a 100% strain according to the formula, resulting in bone cell lysis, and also make bone healing impossible to happen. On the other hand, in a comminuted fracture, this displacement will result in a strain of 12.5%, resulting in biological asthesynthesis. We hope you have understood the concept of strain and start applying it in your routine to choose the best asthesynthesis method for your patients.